May it be a light for you in dark places when all other lights go out. Hey guys, DCHL Devin here and welcome to another Nova List review video. And in these videos, we're going to be reviewing every single list that came to Nova Open and discuss their strengths, strategies, and weaknesses and why they picked what I, well, why I think they picked what they picked. So uh, keep in mind, guys, the, all the players at Nova Open had to go by a certain comp restriction. If you don't know what that is, I would highly recommend going on the DC Hobbit League uh, website and finding out what the comp is. Essentially, it's one faction with a list of exceptions. And of course, I'll name what those exceptions are. So now we're getting into the fifth and sixth place winners at Nova Open. And that is David Clubley and Joseph Hanlon. David Clubley is a British player. He's actually a GBHL member. Uh, once again, just not one of the GBHL podcast members. And Joseph Hanlon is actually a rising member of the OSBGL community. Uh, quite a bit of a tournament winner lately. So let's go into their two lists. It, some of them might surprise you. Let's start with David Clubley. Uh, you can see here that David Clubley has Saruman. Oh, well, first off, he has an Isengard force. He has Saruman as his general, of course, makes sense. Uh, Saruman will be staying in the back of the field, able to cast magic. And then you'll notice from the rest of this that David Clubley actually has a very different style Isengard list than Damien O'Byrne. Uh, his is more of an all-comers list, kind of uh, generic in its sense. He does have uh, four berserkers or three berserkers in every single warband, as you notice here. Uh, but he also has 10 crossbows, uh, kind of very similar to what uh, Damien brought, just no Vrasku this time. Time, and he brought pikemen. So he has two Urukai warriors or three Urukai warriors or even four in the last and the third warband with pikes uh, in his warband. So it seems like what he's trying to do here is use the crossbows to a devastating effect to scare fell beasts or, or mounted armies or anything like that. Make sure they actually come toward him. And then he has all of the uh, the, the pikemen that will back up the berserkers. So he has Lurts as another leader. Once again, a solid choice, three points of might. He has a Shaman just in case, hey, if they have no Ring Wraith, he can cast Fury. And then an interesting choice, he added in Sharku with four Warg Riders. And we'll get into that in a moment. And then he has Grima. So of course, why not pick Grima? So we're talking about 39 models, a breakpoint of 21. That's actually pretty healthy for a 800 point army and uh, he has 10 bows as mentioned before so getting into the strategies here what is it he's trying to do obviously the uh, pikemen are there to back up the berserkers he's using them as four attack line uh, basically winning the fights and everything uh, ensuring him that he will pretty much slaughter any target that he's actually trying to go up against in that fight now an interesting note that i wanted to bring up is the fact that he actually has a banner in his list now this could be for one of two reasons Either one, he didn't read the scenarios and notice that we don't have to the death or any banner requirement in the Nova scenarios, or two, he's using it just to give that extra dice to those four attacks. If you back up a, a Berserker with two Pikemen, then plus banner, that's five dice essentially you are getting in that fight. You're practically guaranteed to win, except for when, of course, you don't have the higher fight value. Uh, either way, uh, Banner is not a bad option, so I, I think that it's still a solid choice in his list. Still something, I mean, it makes sense. It, it's something, a recommendation. Uh, next, he has uh, uh, Healthy Heroes, everything like that. Everything's pretty solid, exactly what you'd expect from a competitive Isengard list. The only thing that's interesting, the Sharku and four Warg Riders. Obviously, these are for objectives. He wants to run them out toward objectives or carry prizes. In the final mission of Nova Open, you actually have to carry a jewel from one side to the other of the map. And these warg riders could be essential for either carrying that, uh, that objective or also hunting down, let's say, messengers. In the Nova Open missions, you have messenger models that you need to take out. And these guys can easily get around the ranks. Sharku with three might is able to call heroic combats, jump around with his warg riders, and really cause a lot of disruption in the back ranks. Even if we're talking about a standard matchup, the Warg Riders are a nice throw-in where they can, once again, as I mentioned, call hero combats, hit the sides, flanks, and then jump around the back and then cause traps where your Berserkers, with already five dice, are crushing them. So, but now you're just granting trap kills on top of that, giving you 10 dice, essentially, or I'm sorry, eight dice, because the banner reroll won't count. So the eight dice to ensure the wound. 
Overall, this is a solid list, and of course, it is wrapped up with by Grima. Grima being a 25-point include. Once again, not on horse, but it's fine. Most Grimas are not on horse when included into an Isengard list. So, solid Isengard list, guys. If you're ever wondering, um, Isengard is one of those top-ranking armies. It's one of those armies that is kind of obvious what you're going to do with them, and that makes them a perfect beginner army and a perfect... Uh, type of tournament army because you know they do exactly what they want to do very well. Uh, obviously, he's not really worried about uh, terror causing models with berserkers in the front rank, but um, the fury will help with, say, the warg riders, it will help with the standard Urukai. So that's it, guys. That's what I have to say about his list. I think a lot of it is pretty uh, on the nose, just kind of by the numbers type of Isengard list. I think this hit the success of this list ultimately came down to his skill level, because uh, I think there were a lot of other Isengard lists very similar to this that didn't do so hot in the Nova Open. So let's go into the next list. Now this one is actually gonna surprise quite a bit of you. It's actually a Durin's Folk list. How often do you really see a Durin's Folk list at the top of the charts? Even in the GBHL, you're not gonna find it. Durin's Folk just don't make it. Now does that mean they're not competitive? No, they're just much harder to be to win tournaments where mobility is such a key factor, especially at the Nova Open, where in the scenarios that we just had, all of the scenarios do cater to a, a mobility aspect. So let's go ahead and look right into it. He's got Durin's Folk, he's got 34 models, a break point of 18 and a quarter of 8. Not too bad, especially when all of your army needs to a six. At, remember, everyone in the game needs a six just to kill any model in this army. So you're already on a pretty good start with 34 models. It's not bad for a Durin's Folk list. He's got his leader is Gimli. Now, let's go through the warbands here. Gimli is 90 points, which means that he did not give him an elven cloak. So he's purely relying on that eight defense in order to make sure that Gimli doesn't get wounded or get hurt. Then he's got nine dwarf warriors with, I'm sorry, eight dwarf warriors with shield, and he's got three iron guard. Pretty standard, pretty run of the mill. Then he has a king's champion, um, and obviously the two heralds take up its warband slots, and he's got three iron guard, once again, and five dwarf warriors with shield. So this is another very solid choice. King's Champion models are very well-respected, very feared models. I think he didn't make him the general, even though he can go to Defense 9, simply because the Heralds can be separated, and then he only has one fate. Sure, Defense 9 is hard to crack, but once the Heralds are separated out, he becomes Defense 7. Defense 7 with only two wounds and one point of fate. He's basically a captain model at that point. So I think there's a good reason Gimli is the general and not the King's Champion. Next, uh, he has Balin. Balin with two Iron Guard, three Dwarf Warriors with Bow, and four Dwarf Warriors with Shield. So the Bow option here is actually kind of the interesting one, but I'll get that into a second. But Balin is a strong option in this list. Without Durin in the list, you would expect he had Durin's Axe. I believe he does. Um, I'll have to re-double check that, but I, it, 85 points seems like exactly what his normal base cost is, so I don't actually think he might have bought it. Uh, then the last option is Radagast from the Brown, uh, I'm sorry, Radagast the Brown, and he's 200 points, meaning he did pick the Slay and Sebastian options. So, uh, and uh, yes, actually I'm confirming here, Balin does have Durin's Axe, and of course you guys see it on the screen. So, Let's analyze how does this Durin's Folk list of all other Durin's Folk lists make it to the top of the Nova Open. Now, obviously, there's going to be player skill involved here, but just from a list perspective, he's got a pretty solid list. Defense 7 plus all the way through. Now, Radagast is one of the reasons this list can actually be competitive. It's the fact that Radagast is a fast mobile option, can cast our Dismay, but that fast mobility allows him to hit uh, back ranks, hit messengers, hit uh, things that he really needs to, and of course, the dreaded cavalry armies, let's say a Rivendell Knight list that he goes up against, he's going to need a way to panic them. Panic Steed, drop them off their mounts, and Radagast gives an option to do that. I think Radagast is just an all-comers help on everything. He can take out infantry blobs, he can give you the terror, he can give you uh, the, the aspect of knocking down cavalry, and if he really needs to, he can heal those already really hard to wound heroes. And, uh, and of course, transfix. He can take out monsters, just transfix the monster, let your dwarves take care of the rest, all piercing strikes. 
So I think overall he's got a very solid hero, uh, solid list backed up by an extremely solid hero option. Note, guys, that the top winning lists of Nova at 800 points all have a wizard or some type of magic user thrown in them. Uh, at least the ones we've discussed so far, right? We're on the top six, and we still have always seen that nice 200 point, 150 point wizard model. That's because oftentimes, 800 points is really just 600 points, but with a big hero thrown in, that is a support model. Radagast is his. Now, the only thing I'd say about the three dwarf warriors of the bow is actually I only think it hurts him. At a four up to shoot value, it means he's only gonna hit 50% of the time. Then, of course, you add on the fact that there's strength two bows, which means that he's not really going to wound all that much. Or I'm sorry, no, there's strength three. But even at strength three, he's only still wounding most things on fives. So he hits half the time and then wounds a third of the time. That means you're talking about every three turns, he's only really killing like maybe two things. I don't know why he chose to throw these two, uh, two three bows in there. I, I think they would have been better off just with shields, just boost that or maybe even another iron guard or something like that. But that's what he chose. Um, I that's the only part of the list where I'd be like, I don't really know why we're going there. But maybe he just did it to hope to dismount a hero at range. Uh, at that rank, though, I would just say Radagast the Brown does the same trick for an easier price. So I, I, I'm not really sure where that came from, but it doesn't hurt his list tremendously at all. So it's really not worth, you know, beating yourself up over, even if it was a mistake. So ultimately, guys, Note, this is a standard run-of-the-mill Durin's Folk army. There's nothing insane about it. There's nothing like jaw-dropping about it other than the inclusion of Radagast the Brown. So very clearly he's using this exactly as most of you guys would expect the Durin's Folk army to be used. Uh, just, you know, has that extra magic element in it. I like this list. I think it's a very solid list. And I can see why you ranked up so high at the Nova Open. Uh, it's, it's just an absolute um, well-rounded list, I guess you can say. I think the heroes can use their might to pound through, uh, maybe hero combats and such like that, if he does need any of that extra mobility once combat has been reached. So... All right, guys, that is David Clubley and uh, Joseph Hanlon. Next, we're going to go into a list made by Jacob Hall. It's an all fell beast army. So you get to see the fell beast that he brought and that got him to seventh place. And then you're going to see another army by Benjamin Erickson. It is another Rivendell list. However, this time with foot models thrown in. If I can, I'm going to try to get uh, da uh, I'm sorry, Jacob to actually review his own list. So that way we can get his thoughts on why it is. He actually picked what he picked. So, all right, guys, I will talk to you very soon. Let me know if you have any questions.